on the whole it was a year of uh, trepidation and angst and having cancellation of almost us dollar 3.18 billion and waking up to daily cancellation messages and messages of discount and uh, deferment of shipment um, and also deferment of payments and endless uh, discussions had become a part of our routine and as much as the brand had suffered we had actually suffered much more because uh, there was the worker element in in our business which the brands don't have so the 4.1 million workers engaged in the sector faced uncertainty um and and entrepreneurs who had built their factories with the hope of expansion and future also faced uh, a dark path of the unknown so eventually um when uh, the brand started to um reinstate the orders and when 90% of the orders were reinstated we still had to face uh, back to back liabilities of almost 1.96 billion dollar worth which still remains unpaid because of either buyers not having paid or for their bankruptcies so this year the growth of rmg uh, from january to november stands at 17.64% minus 17.64% and and in spite of the growth in august and september we have again plummeted um because of the second wave october onward and uh, the the export growth was also quite negative in in november it had november we had uh, minus 2.66% and in december for the first 10 days sorry first 20 days uh, it's minus 5.64% uh, the challenges that we face in the sector are Uh, number one uncertainties of placement of orders from the buyers um and number two the second challenge is of course obtaining working capital for the small and medium enterprises um number three the challenges of bankruptcies of the brands and the lack of protection at our end number four the deferred payments and discounts uh number five the uncertainty of uh, the trend of consumption and consumers because we don't know what the consumer is going to buy next everybody has shifted from their uh, regular consumption patterns everyone's buying less they are buying more with caution they're thinking about where it is produced so you know an ethical choice has become a choice for the consumer because they consider apparel all of us do we all consider apparel as our second skin so this has also set in so the 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 image uh, deficit is is something that bangladesh has to cope with bangladesh rmg sector has to cope with this is the sixth um so these are challenges and also the consumer um uh, pace of 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 consumerism is also uh, quite at a low right now nobody has the um heart or the mind to shop now so we are hoping that you know once when the pandemic is over or when everybody is vaccinated then again consumerism consumerism will be on the rise but at the same time there is another point that we want to drive uh, home and that is bangladesh has a lot of green factories but we don't have green prices bangladesh has many practices which are not even acknowledged by a broad and not even publicized so economic diplomacy is a must and also at the same time we need to own up to our own good practices and be very objective about whatever we are not meeting uh, the the requirements 100% and uh, trust me we are not the only ones who are who are lagging behind in any any sense of the word then i mean western buyers have basically this time um uh, kind of showed us their their faces their their real faces because um when they faced their economic uncertainty automatically uh, they they evoked force majeure clauses and and they pushed it down our throats there was no understanding of you know whether that supplier was a long term partner whether they had done business with us for a long time that consideration was not there so it was a knee jerk reaction from the western buyers and that kind of you know brings one point home and that is we need to grow our own base we need to look inward and we also need to go regional because i think regional alliances at this point of time is more important it would be good to have um another um another regional collaboration on man made fiber based production 
we need man-made fiber-based textile here. So there is challenges of, you know, diversity in product, uh, diversity in market, and also uh, diversity in, in raw material. For instance, uh, in, in Bangladesh, we are now still growing in cotton production, whereas the entire world has actually gone the other way. The world is uh, now catering to man-made fiber-based uh, uh, textiles. So this is important for us to realize uh, where we are. Uh, standing. So amidst all these challenges, the actual challenge at this point of time is also that there is no unemployment uh, uh, fund uh, protection scheme, or rather unemployment protection scheme for the workers. Now, many, many people very often question and say, why would a, uh, an industry of 40 years not have the capacity to, to to pay for one month of wage. Actually, the industry pays $423 million per month as wages. And, you know, it's, it's sad, but we also um, need some kind of protection in case if we uh, fail in our businesses. God forbid that is not going to happen, inshallah. And hopefully by June, we should be recovering uh, because our competitors, I mean, Ethiopia, you know, is politically unstable now. Uh, you know, Cambodia ha uh, has lost its uh, GSP. So, you know, it is the right time for us to position ourselves. Let us come back to good stories a little later. Let me just first say, you know, what the government had done for us, which you all know that Honorable Prime Minister was extremely, um, extremely vigilant and extremely timely with her move to announce the stimulus packages in March. And majority of the factories would have faced closure had the bureaucrats not actually supported the private sector wholeheartedly. We, we would have been in dire straits. So at this point of time where we are, you know, our repayment is supposed to start in January. So we are um, pleading with the government to have the moratorium extended to one year instead of six months. And also at the same time, it's a two year long uh, moratorium, um, uh, the, the, the tenure, we, we want it extended to at least uh, five years. This is something that we need and uh, this will help the sector, this temporary help uh, will help the sector to go to the next level. We do see the, uh, the sector excelling in June, inshallah. Um, because, you know, the other competitor is, of course, Vietnam, but Vietnam also has limited capacity, production capacity, and uh, it will not be in a better position as well. So a temporary support will revive the industry and take it to a far superior platform, uh, which would basically help us uh, with the thrust in product diversification. And, uh, you know, there, there are other businesses that, that are associated with our sector, for instance, uh, we can actually concentrate on, on, on recycling. Recycling is a $4 billion annually, uh, $4 billion worth business. So we need to also uh, think, you know, whether we can invest in recycling. We need to also invest in value addition. And of course, preparing for the fourth industrial revolution because workforce skill is needed. Even if we um, diversify into light engineering, we must make the sector ready. So. Um, apart from all this, um, I think uh, the, the challenge is currently, um, you know, most of the times we are, we are firefighting. Most of the times we, we don't have any long-term, uh, mid-term vision. At this point of time, all I can say is that, you know, value addition um, is, is a, a mid-term um, uh, vision. Uh, product diversification is a long-term vision. At the same time, uh, you know, we, we are graduating uh, from the L LDC status with a lot of pride, but we need to be prepared for that. And in order to do that, if we do graduate, which we will, inshallah, then what happens is um, the, the clause of double transformation comes into play. That means we will need backward linkage. So long-term vision would have investment in man-made fiber-based uh, backward linkage facilities in, in this country. And short term right now, we need to consolidate our businesses. We need to restructure them, be more efficient because there are lots of leakages uh, in, in how we operate. 
in our operation. So we all need to be a little tight. Um, so product diversification, market diversification, and sector diversification are all, uh, you know, should be our in, 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 you know, in our whatever term vision that you may want to call it. But, but these are absolutely essential. Also, we should be um, mapping our skill grid at this point of time. It's important because then we can link wage with uh, efficiency. Um, as far as coronavirus is concerned, we haven't, um, alhamdulillah, we haven't really seen uh, a very negative impact on coronavirus on the RMG sector workforce. Rather, we have lost a lot of entrepreneurs to this uh, uh, beastly pandemic, and, and we pray for the departed soon. Uh, but uh, in the sector, we haven't seen much incidence at all, and that is proven by um, the, the lack of absenteeism in our sector. Um, and, and we have somehow, um, thanks uh, to, of course, to extreme uh, vigilance in part of the factories which have um, complied with the factory maintaining uh, factory protocols, uh, maintenance protocols, and, and we do send uh, um, surprise visits uh, to the factories and everybody wants to protect their business. So everyone's very cautious. They do know that they, if they deviate, number one, we have six teams going around uh, the sector. Uh, number two, if the labor leaders have any such factory names where they can actually say that this factory is not following the health guideline, the point is they have to tell us and you so that we can collectively go and remediate the problem. Now, 1986 can, factories can have 19,000 problems, but is the idea to just go to press and say that so many things are going wrong and not being able to identify the factories, that is not expected. What is expected is this is a time for labor side and the industry side and the brand side to come together and not do finger pointing because finger pointing is easy. I can today say a lot of things uh, which may not uh, sound very happy, uh, which may not sound like music to others' ears, but I'm refraining from doing that because I have no right to overgeneralize issues. So I would rather request you to get the names of the factories who are not complying. If there are our members, we will certainly take care of that. And with the second wave coming, we have so far sent three circulars out to our members. And we have said, that we are coming and we have gone. So it's not as if we are in any way lax. In fact, you will see many of us not wearing masks, but you will see workers wearing masks. You will see many weddings taking place in Dhaka, but you will not see a worker engaging in fanfare. So that is the level of consciousness in a worker. A worker knows that he or she needs to be careful. We at our end, in our bubble, are often forgetting this. So I would rather suggest whoever is not, which are, number one, what is crucially needed? Masks. Every factory has it. Nobody can wear work without masks. Number two, hand washing before joining work every morning is a must because they're sitting in the machine and they're actually touching fabric. So, and number three, the, the basic thing about not touching their faces, they are much more careful than us. So I would rather say it is easy to finger point and say so many things are wrong, but it's not easy to go around and actually make a chart. So I am requesting through, through you to, and my request to them through you would be, please kindly identify the factories and tell us so that we can all together remediate. It's time to be together. And it's also time for brand to take uh, uh, be accountable as well. The brands cannot just you know walk away from just placing orders and uh, pulling out whenever there is any kind of hiccup. That is not called partnership. This is a country which has grown over the last twenty years substantially. Uh, because last, I mean, we only have two factories for 40 years. Most of the factories are only 20 years old. I mean, for the last two decades, the, this growth, this, this sector has seen unprecedented growth. And this has come because buyers have asked us to grow also. They have increased orders and everything. But it is also on their shoulders to make sure that the good stories of Bangladesh get uh, publicized. When they talk about sustainability, 
I always say it is about sustainable lives and livelihoods. It is just not about having a green factory. A green factory means nothing if the practices are not green. So a buyer is also an integral part of the sourcing. So a buyer also needs to make sure that he or she is playing fair. So the, the fairness or the justice, that is not to be ensured by only the suppliers. It is very much a, a part and parcel of the buyer's commitment to source from Bangladesh. And so far, we have never raised our voice about this. So I'm glad that we are raising our voices. And what we are saying is while the consumer buys the product, it is the buyers who should be telling them the lovely stories of the 4.1 million workers, that they work hard, that it's majority is women. This, these are stories that our workers are now going to universities. I mean, this is what needs to be told so that when the buyers, especially the young generation who are conscious consumers can come forward and um, know for, the, their, for, for themselves that, that their choice is an ethical one. It is time to remediate whatever is not right. It is not a time to be defensive. It is a time to work together and be reflective because COVID, if it has taught us anything, it has taught us how to be reflective in, in isolation. We have all learned to live alone. I think it's time to come together. So we need your help and we need the brand's help and the labor side's help and industry, of course, needs to be on its toes so that we can only get better with time. Before pandemic, there, there were 2,282 factories which were running under BGME membership. Um, after closure, it's 1965. I'm sorry. I think I said 1985 or 84. It's 1965. So 1965 factories are running. 317 have closed down. And about uh, the workers losing their job, our initial uh, database showed 76,000 workers had lost their jobs. Currently, it stands at 70,000. And approximately 40% have gone back to their former employment or they have joined elsewhere. So the number is actually declining every day.